Welcome. Monday, December 20th, 2021, 7 p.m. Uh, the town council meeting in our council chambers. The meeting can also be seen on YouTube. Uh, prayer, Councillor Despard. And then the Pledge of Allegiance. So I chose, uh, considering, uh, considering that we're in the holiday season, I chose a, a Christmas uh, prayer for friends. And it goes, um, my prayer for you this Christmas is like a special gift. I choose to ask for peace and joy, and there's more on the list. I know you need both hope and love to fill your life anew. And so I take these precious things and wrap them up for you. I ask that you would know how much you're loved and held so dear as I take a ribbon of grace <clears throat> and tie a bow this year. On the label, I'll write my promise new to you. You're in my prayers this Christmas time and through the whole year anew. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilor Desbert. Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Despard. Here. Councilor Finger. Here. Councilor Hopkins. Here. Councilor Ludwig. Councilor Mangini. Here. Councilor Pisner. Here. Councilor Santanella. Here. Councilor Ungeyer. Here. Councilor Bosco. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Here. Mayor Crisati. Here. That's nine members present, two absent. Fire evacuation announcement. In the event of a fire, there are exits in the back of the chambers to my left and to the audience's right, there is another exit. You would exit through the doors, you go down into the stairway and into the parking lot. Number five, minutes of the preceding uh, meetings. Do I have a motion to so, accept the minutes? Uh, so Councilor Mangini. Second. Second, Councilor Pisner. Any discussion, deletions, or additions? By a show of hands, in favor? Against, abstentions? Uh, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Special meeting, December 6th, so two, moved. 2021. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Councilor Mangini? Second. Second, uh, Councilor Hopkins. Any discussions, additions, or deletions? By a show of hands, all in favor? Uh, nine in favor, none against, there are no abstentions. The regular meeting, December 6, 2021. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? Second. Councilor Finger and seconded by Councilor Mangini. Any discussion, additions or deletions? By a show of hands, all in favor? Against, abstentions, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Okay, next, uh, we would like to recognize tonight as our special guest, uh, Chloe C Clark, uh, our kid governor. Uh, Chloe is a fifth grader from the Prudence Crandall School, and she was the winner of Enfield's kid governor campaign. She participated with us in the Torchlight Parade. She helped turn the lights on and she started the uh, holiday season kickoff here in Enfield. Uh, she did a fantastic job. Uh, she said a few words at the town green and she led us in the carol sing. I wanna congratulate you, Chloe, on your platform. There's a short video that was produced. We are gonna watch that. And then uh, I have a little something for you in a proclamation. And then you can uh, come up and say a few words. But uh, Alex, if you could play the video, please. Hi, my name is Chloe and my platform is Self Insecurities. Self Insecurities has three branches. 
relationship insecurities, friendship insecurities, and basic insecurities. A lot of people have these types of insecurities. A lot of this comes from bullying. Bullying is a way of making kids feel like they are ugly. Then this can lead to suicide. Suicide is a way of ending your life when you feel alone or depressed. If I was kid governor, I would help figure out a way to stop this. Some people take jokes and games and may take something someone said to heart. Some kids and even adults like up to people, but sometimes they look down on themselves and get self insecurities. It will help people realize that they have different bodies, different looks, and different talents. Some people think they can learn something in a day, but no one can. Some people think they need plastic surgery to look like a model, but like I said before, I will help people realize that they are beautiful just the way they are. wear makeup to make them feel pretty but lots of people also think they're ugly without it on I will help adults and kids feel pretty without makeup makeup is basically a way to cover up your natural beauty lots of people in the world wear blush concealer all that stuff but all you need is a mirror to see how beautiful you really are I want everyone to have high self-esteem. If I'm your next kid governor, I'm going to help our community raise self-esteem levels. My three ideas are I will create a blog, I will design t-shirts, and I'll write a children's book about my struggles. Blog, I will talk to people about self-esteem and encourage them to be kind to themselves. I will talk to our principal because he's always kind. I will talk to our school counselor because she teaches kindness skills and loving yourself the way they are. Can I interview you for my kindness blog? Sure! Here on March 31st will be Compliment Yourself Day. In the blog, I will encourage people to read kind words about themselves. On March 31st. March 31st is my birthday. I will design t-shirts with a meaning of kindness on each shirt. I will sell them to donate to cancer patients that may be in to care about their hair. The tees will have a modern design. There will be a lot of different designs, but they will all have a kindness saying. I used to have self insecurities about my skills and flexibility, but now I have learned to be kind to myself. I want to share my experience in a children's book. I want children to recognize that they are their own person and different is good. I hope you enjoyed this speech. Have an amazing day and remember to love yourself. Vote Chloe for your next kid governor. Chloe, I'm going to invite you up here. Uh, you don't have to go to the seats, but you can come up here to the dais with me. And I'm going to be reading a proclamation. And then we have a little something for you. Okay. What? Yeah, if we could all come out here, that would be great. Mind up here with me, Chloe. We have a proclamation honoring the Enfield Kid Governor, Chloe Clark. Whereas the Connecticut's Kid Governor and Kid Mayor program is statewide for fifth graders that encourages action through civic participation and whereas the civic program shows students how they can use their understanding of community and government to take action locally. And whereas each intermediate school holds an election and the three school-wide candidates move into the district-wide primary. And whereas Chloe showed her leadership quality skills and showed how she plans to address the community issue of self-insecurities with a three-point plan of how she will make a difference. Whereas Chloe Clark is Enfield's 2021-2022 candidate for Connecticut's kid governor. Now, therefore, I, Bob Crisotti, mayor of the town of Enfield, on behalf of the town council, the town administration, and the entire community, hereby honor the Enfield kid governor, Chloe Clark, on this achievement and making a difference in our community by taking action. And congratulations. Your statement is something that this community should cherish. And I want to thank you very much for everything that you have done. Your school is proud of you. Our town is proud of you. 
So thank you very much, and I'm going to give you the microphone to you to say a couple of words, okay? Can I go with my speech? Yes, please. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chloe Clark, and it's a pleasure to see you all again. And for those I have not met, it's a pleasure is all mine. Thank you, everyone, for giving me the opportunity to go above and beyond for my community. I will continue to push my peers and to end self-insecurities. Thank you all again. Thank you, Chloe. On behalf of the town of Enfield, here's your proclamation. And we have a, uh, a gift for you. And thank you so much and i'll be seeing you throughout the school year as we move forward into 2022 and we wish you and your family a merry christmas and a happy new year You're welcome. Next on the agenda is public communications. The first round of public communications will last approximately one hour. Any person wishing to speak, please state your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes to speak for the first round and three minutes for each subsequent round. Please refrain from personalities and we ask that everyone be respectful to one another out in the audience. Do we have anybody who wishes to come before the council this, this evening? Okay. Matt Schmidt, 1304 Bigelow Commons. Good evening, town council members. With Christmas just days away, some of you might be looking for that last minute gift. I would like to recommend a classic of children's literature, The Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. For those of you unfamiliar with the story, it is a short tale about a society of fanciful creatures called Sneetches. Some have a star in their belly and some don't. Those with a star brag about being better due to the star. So the plain bellied Sneetches rush to apply a star to their bellies to validate their equality. So then the original star bellied Sneetches have their stars removed and say that is now what makes them better. This back and forth for dominance plays out with whether a star or no star puts one above another in the Sneech society constantly changing until all are confused on how they are to know who is better than the others. In the end, thankfully, the Sneeches realize the folly of thinking that one is better than another based on such distinctions. They reject star belly discrimination and become harmonious in the satisfaction that, that, they, that they are all equal in reality. Seuss's story of the Sneeches is genius in how it addresses discrimination. Instead of focusing on a specific actual bias, it attacks the whole concept of discrimination through metaphor, showing that discrimination of any type is not only morally wrong, but also toxic to a healthy society. Why do I think this children's book about discrimination written in 1961, a good gift for the 2021 holidays? Well, it was recently revealed that a new technological tool developed by the state will allow Connecticut businesses to practice discrimination more effectively. With the COVID passport the governor is rolling out, a business can easily verify the vaccine status of patrons as a means of denying entry to some. We will become veritable sneeches, digitally exposing our bellies as a requirement to entry. If you don't have the socially accepted star or if you choose to just keep your belly to yourself, you will be excluded. But this isn't real discrimination, right? That would be ridiculous. I mean, if there were an app on your phone that verified your attendance at church as a requirement to attend a concert, we would reject that wholesale because we all know that's real discrimination. Same if the governor used taxpayer funds to develop an application for businesses that employed a skin pigment meter. We would surely cry foul and rightfully so. And if the state were to assist in some way businesses that sought to admit only heterosexuals based on a perceived HIV threat, reminiscent of how our society almost fell off that discriminatory ledge in the 1980s, 
we would be absolutely aghast at the lack of humanity of such an idea. Thankfully, we are much more enlightened now, aren't we? Aren't we? Yet this is what we are doing with medical choice. Ah, but this is different, you say. Medical choice is not a protected class. Religion, race, and sexual orientation are. They are codified in our laws. But religion, race, and sexual orientation weren't always protected classes. They weren't always codified in our laws. Someone had to speak up. Speak up against abuses of these populations of our society. Abuses perpetrated by individuals, by businesses, and by government. Perpetrated by some who genuinely thought they were well-meaning based on their ill-informed understanding at the time. Exclusion of these protected classes are not wrong or detrimental because we deem them protected. Their exclusion is wrong because it relies on the flawed concept of discrimination, on the concept that there is a hierarchy of worth in our society based on a man-made realization of difference. And this taxpayer-funded technology that our governor and many others are promoting uses discrimination to achieve exclusion. And the consequences for society are grave, as they have always been, no matter the segment of society excluded. So why have I come here to make this argument? Well, because this council is my most immediate representative and my most accessible. And I would hope all of you would join me in speaking out against any and all discrimination. Do not be a bystander. The silent lips of bystanders offer no voice to the course of justice. The only way things ever change or are rectified is through the action of people. As the oft used quote goes, if not us, who? If not now, when? Out of all the questions you may ever ask yourself in this life, those two might be the most important. So as you celebrate the holidays and spend time with your family and friends and share laughs and smiles and hugs, know that others are doing the same because that is what people do. We enjoy each other and we are all people, no matter our religion or the color of our skin, no matter our sexual orientation or our medical choices, and no matter if a star adorns our belly or not. This is the wisdom handed down to us from a seemingly simple children's book written 60 years ago. May the coming year be filled with such wisdom, and may this wisdom be shared with others. For there may possibly be no greater gift for our society to share at possibly no greater a time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Is there anybody that would like to come up a second time? Okay, I declare public communications over. A councilor communications? Councilor Pisner. Um, <clears throat> I had the pleasure of um, being with Therese across America both on Wednesday and then uh, when they arrived here and then on Saturday. And um, for those watching at home, um, Lori Gates and Pam Townsend does a fabulous job with that. Um, and I have always bought a wreath for both my uncle and my dad. The thing I didn't realize is that not all veterans get a wreath on their graves. Um, it is through donations that they get them. So um, I told Pam tonight that I would tell everybody out there in TV land that right now, if you would like to purchase a wreath for 2022, they are having a buy one, get one. So you can buy a wreath for your loved one, and then one will be donated to someone who does not have somebody getting them a wreath. So um, I did leave some here tonight, if anybody in the audience would like one. Um, for those of you watching at home, you can go on Facebook, contact Pam Townsend, or contact myself. Um, but again, between now and January 14th is a great time to go on there and do the buy one, get one. Um, uh, they need 1,700. We came in at a little over 1,100. Um, she's also reaching out to some corporate uh, corporates, uh, corporations in town to see if we can get some corporate donations for this. But um, I told Pam and Lori that I will do everything possible on my part to see if we can't reach that 1700 So again, this is a great time. You buy one wreath for $15, you donate one. 
So um, anybody who is interested, please, um, please, you know, reach out to myself or Pam. And just happy holidays to everybody, whatever holiday you're, you're celebrating. Um, I wish you a, a blessed holiday and a happy, healthy new year. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Mangini. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. I pretty much was going to echo what you just said. Um, I did have the, um, the privilege, actually, of attending the wreath ceremony, but also um, working in the school. I was able to um, assist the uh, children over at Eli Whitney along the fence line when they watched um, the convoy come through. And it was really heartwarming to see the children so um, excited and so proud to see the truck come through and understand what it was all about, which I was really pleased to see. And getting on to um, the donation, uh, absolutely, if, if people can come forward and purchase, that is through the Veterans Council. The Veterans Council does have a budget, and we will be approaching budget time, and I know they're also um, you know, uh, working on that piece too. But corporate donations would be helpful. But I was very pleased to hear that they came so very close to meeting that goal. I think last year was over 800 and this year was the 11 mark, which is phenomenal. And then I also just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Any other Councillor communications? Councillor Ungar. I just wanted to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I hope everyone has a wonderful New Year. Let's hope 2022 is a lot better than this year. Okay. All right. I, I have a couple of uh, comments that I'd like to make before we move on. Uh, and first of all, uh, getting back to the Reese Cross America ceremony, uh, two ceremonies that were held, one at the town hall and then at St. Pat's Cemetery. Uh, remember, there are three major uh, points to the wreaths across America, and they are remember, honor, and teach. And I think uh, with these two ceremonies, it really exemplified what the town of Enfield uh, does and how it remembers its veterans. So. Uh, once again, hats off to uh, Pam Townsend and, and Lori Gates and the Veterans Council. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting the drivers uh, of Walmart on their journey to National, Nash, uh, Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, when they came into the town hall and, and they got situated, I met with all of them and I gave them Enfield hats. I gave them the Enfield uh lapel logos and they were ecstatic they were so appreciative uh, and we made them honorary citizens of Enfield and they, they really loved it and uh, you know uh, so we're really proud of that that convoy paraded by 12 schools students waving and cheering and holding their flags and wreaths we had people out in the streets, you had veterans saluting, you had residents out there, you had the fire departments, the police departments, everybody was, the EMS, they were all situated throughout the town of Enfield. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. The police department uh, choreographed uh, the route and made sure that public safety was number one. So we, we appreciate that. Uh, and I always will give uh, kudos uh, to our great police department. Uh, to the resident, residents, the businesses, our, our town staff was out here. Uh, it was just a great community event and something that we should really be proud of. Um, yesterday was the last day of our Enfield Regional Farmers Market at the Enfield Square. Uh, there was a huge crowd. Um, people coming in and out doing their last minute Christmas shopping. Uh, the Enfield Square uh, Farmer's Market was from October 31st through December 19th. Every Sunday that was open. Thank you to all the vendors, uh, to all the people that, you know, that frequented the, um, the event every, every weekend. And I just have to say special thanks to everybody from the town that goes you know, to County Prevention, Preventure. Uh, Danielle Flaherty, 
uh, Deb McCarthy, uh, everybody in, in the Enfield staff who really put this together. Um, you know, we have a great farmer's market during the summer, extended uh, into the fall, and then it goes through the, the winter months. So uh, that, that's a great another event that we have. Uh, and the last thing that I just want to say is um, our midget football program here in town, our infield Ramblers, the A team and the C team, uh, I did want to give them recognition. Both of the teams made it to the Northern Connecticut Conference Super Bowl. Uh, the A team did win, uh, so congratulations to all the players, the coaching staff, the parents, and, and all the people that go out and support the, this uh, organization. Uh, and our C team uh, got beat in the finals, but they had a, a very, very good season. I told the, uh, everybody that was involved that I would recognize them, and maybe sometime in you know, January or February, we could actually have them in uh, as a special guest to honor them. Uh, the eight team coaches were Craig Pelkey, Scott Davis, John Magipinto, uh, Cedric Avalas, uh, Matt Moreno, and James Liver. The C team, Andy Christmas, Jason Veritasniak, Joe Rinaldi, Ray Eastwick, Ryan Nicholson, uh, Julian Penner, and our John LeBlanc, who's on the Board of Ed. So congratulations to each and every one of you uh, for your commitment to our youth here in town. Uh, two other things that were pretty important that happened. And actually, they're going to be happening tomorrow with the state. The Bonding Commission uh, for our train platform, um, the construction for the train platform in Thompsonville, a $35 million dollar uh, bond is up uh, tomorrow. It's on the agenda along with the $1.5 million grant to the Opera House players. So uh, so we, we are, uh, you know, having a lot of activity. A lot of good things are going to be happening, uh, you know, with this Opera House players, the performing arts facility and the, uh, the, the work and the time that's going on with that. So and I will have a, a wrap up to everybody at the end of the meeting in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you know, Merry Christmas to everybody and Happy New Year. But uh, that's all I have to say in regards to uh, Counselor Communications. And so Counselor Communications are, are over. Uh, Town Manager report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A, a PAR report is included with your packets, so you will have several items, as you typically do, from each one of the departments. I would certainly uh, draw your attention to that report and invite you to peruse those items at your leisure. Beyond that report, which tends to be more of the uh, routine items that you're used to seeing, I would draw your attention to just a few more additional items that I thought might be of interest to you. Earlier today, uh, a few of you and I and uh, representatives from our state delegation uh, we're on a virtual call, a conference call with the chief court administrator here in Enfield. The closure of the Enfield court um, is a source of great concern to several of you, which I certainly appreciate because it is, it is of great concern to me as well. Um, as I shared on the call, the, uh, at the grassroots level, even if there's a broader state justification, and uh, Judge Carroll did a great job explaining what that is, um, at the local level, it has a real-world impact. It has an impact on the police department. It has an impact on operations. Um, and as I shared, it has an impact when we have to make a choice as to whether or not to send an officer or two to Hartford with uh, an arraignee, as an example, which then leaves us short-staffed in town, or whether I have to backfill for the people that are going out of town. One, one at least tickles the danger of public safety, and the other one doesn't present that danger, but it costs us money. So we had a very vibrant discussion with Judge Carroll today. It lasted about 45 minutes. Um, he assured us that the court is not closed. However, there are no immediate plans to move it out of its temporary closed status. Um, he assured us that he would be in touch with Senator Kissel in particular before any final decisions were made. And uh, he did very genuinely, I thought, very believably explain that this was solely being driven by staffing and shortages that they have of court personnel. 
Uh, several of you leading up to this were very supportive uh, in terms of pushing this uh, forward as an agenda item for all to consider. Please know that's appreciated on behalf of the town and certainly on behalf of the police department. Uh, moving on, we have received approval from the state to move forward on the bidding for the Eli Whitney and Hazardville roof projects, a positive development in that regard. Two ice rinks have been installed at the Powder Hollow Park. We are just waiting for the continual colder weather for them to be able to become operational. The uh, clearing, you may not have noticed it on the way in because we arrived after dark, but it's impressive to look at. Clearing on the north side of the building and the property immediately adjacent to Town Hall has been completed. Uh, it, was, it was brush, it was overgrown. Um, that is going to eventually be additional parking for the Higgins Park area. Uh, I have to tell you, when I came here earlier today in the daylight, I did not notice it when I pulled in, <laughs> shame on me. It was brought to my attention when I left. I made it a point to make note of it, and uh, great work has been done over there. Lastly, uh, I would give a shout out, as self-serving as this might sound, to the great work that's been done in the Toys for Joy program. At this point, uh, approximately 200 families 475 to 500 children have been accommodated through the Toys for Joy program. And while I will take a, a personal point of, of privilege and pleasure in passing on the accolades to the folks from the police department that have worked very, very hard in this regard, the much more significant point is just the incredible generosity of this community. It has been heartwarming to see. Uh, the presence, the, 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 the donations, um, we, we uh, really have been overwhelmed, as we are every year. And I think that collectively, I, and I'm sure all of you join me in expressing great gratitude to our residents that were in a position um, anonymously in every case to provide for others so that they could enjoy a successful holiday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, town attorney report. Mr. Mayor, there is no public report this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, item 11, report of special committees. Are there any uh, reports that anybody has in regards to any of the committees? Okay, none. All right, number 12, old business items A, B, and C will remain on the table. Uh, item 13, uh, a consent agenda will remain. B, appointments to the town council appointed. Um, we'll move on board of assessment appeals. The term of office of John Ungar expires 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2024. Do I have a nomination? Uh, yes. I'd like to nominate Tom Tyler. Okay, uh, Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, a second. Second. Uh, Councilor Despard, any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? Motion to close nominations. Uh, Councilor <coughs> Santanello, and a second. Second. Deputy Mayor Sakala. All in favor of closing? In favor? Uh, against abstentions, uh, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Uh, any discussions? Sheila, roll call. Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? Four. Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Pisner? Four. Councilor Santanella? Four. Councilor Ungayer? Four. Deputy, Deputy Mayor Sakala? Tom Tyler? Mayor Casati? Four. That's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay. Next, Loan Review Committee. The term of office of Paul Coffey expires 12 31 2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12 31 2023. Do I have a nomination. I nominate, uh, excuse me, I nominate Paul for this vacancy. Councillor Hopkins, uh, do I have a second? second. Deputy Mayor Sakala, uh, do I have any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close motion. the nominations? 
Councillor Sakala second. second. Councillor Mangini. All in favor of closing? Against abstentions? Nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Any discussions? Sheila, roll call. Councillor, Councillor Despard. Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Deputy Mayor, Mayor Sakala. Paul Coffey. And Mayor Crisotti. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Three, Loan Review Committee, the term of office of Philip Kober expires 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2023. Do I have a nomination? Councillor Hopkins? I nominate Philip Kober to fill this uh, vacancy. A second? Second. Uh, Councillor Finger, uh, any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? Close. Councillor Mangini, a second? Uh, Councillor Ungar, all in favor of closing nominations? Against, abstentions, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Any discussions? Sheila, roll call. Councillor, Councillor Despard. Despard. Four. Councillor, Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pesner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Philip Cober. Mayor Prasadi. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, C, appointments, town manager appointed, council approved, there are none. D, appointments, P and Z, commission appointed, council approved, there are none. We will move to 14 items for discussion, consent agenda review. Uh, none B appointments, town council appoint, appointments. The first one is the Commission on Aging. The term of office, David Goyette, expires January 1st, 2022. Reappointment or replacement would be until January 1st, 2025. Do I have a nomination? David Goyette. Councillor Pizzer, David Goyette. Uh, and do I have a second? Second. Uh, Councillor Ungeyer. Any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? Motion to close. So move. Uh, second, Councillor uh, Santanella. All in favor of closing? Against, abstentions? Nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Uh, any discussions? Sheila, roll call. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Mangini. David Goyette. Councillor Pizner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. David Goyette. And Mayor Prasadi. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. The Commission on Aging. The term of office of Michael Arnone expires January 1st, 2022. Reappointment or replacement would be until January 1st, 2025. Do I have a nomination? Uh, Councillor Mangini? Yes, I'd like to uh, reappoint Michael Arnone. And a second? Second. Uh, <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Sakala. Uh, are there any other nominations? Do, do I have a motion? Councillor Santanella, thank you. And a second? Second. Uh, Councillor Hopkins, all in favor of closing? Against, abstentions, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Uh, any discussions? Sheila, roll call. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Michael Arnone. Councilor Pizner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungaya. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Michael Arnone. Mayor Fasadi. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay. 
three, the Commission on Aging, the term of office of Priscilla Linehan expires January 1st, 2022. Reappointment or replacement would be until January 1st, 2025. Do I have a nomination? Uh, yes. Councilor Mangini. I'd like to uh, reappoint Priscilla Linehan. And a second. Second. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Do I have any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close? Motion to close nominations. Councillor Despard, second. a second. Councillor Pisner, all in favor of closing? Uh, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Uh, any discussions? Sheila, roll call, please. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Mangini. Priscilla Lenahan. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungayer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Priscilla Lenahan. And Mayor Casati. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Number four, Ethics Commission. The term of office of Philip Cobar expired. 10-31-2020, reappointment or replacement would be until 5-31-2022. Do I have a nomination? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate Kathleen Sarno. Councilor Santanello, do I have a second? Second. Councilor Finger, uh, are there any other nominations? Do I have a nomination to, to, do I have a motion to close the nomination? Motion to close. Councilor Finger, a second? second. Councilor Mangini, all in favor of closing? Against, abstentions, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Any discussions? Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Kathleen Sarno. Councilor Pisner. Against. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungayer. Against. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Kathleen Sarno. And Mayor Casati. Four. That's seven in favor, two against, and no abstentions. Number five, Library Board of Trustees. The term of office of Sandra Nucio expires 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2024. Do I have a nomination? Councillor Pisner? I nominate Sandra Nucio for yeah. reappointment. Thank you. A second? second. Councillor Mangini. Any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? Councillor Finger, second. second. Councillor Ungeyer. All in favor of closing? Against, abstentions. Nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Any discussions? Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Sandra Nuccio. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungayer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Sandra Nuccio. And Mayor Casati. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Number six, North Central Health Department Board of Directors and Field Representative. A vacant vacancy exists due to the resignation of Shannon Grant. Replacement would be until 6-30-2023. Do I have a nomination? Councillor Hopkins. I nominate James Hoyne. Uh, a second, uh, Councillor Despard. Are there any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? Well, we Councillor Mangini, a second? Second. Councillor Pisner, all in favor of closing? Uh, against, abstentions? Nine in favor, none, none against, zero abstentions. Uh, any discussion? Sheila, roll call. Councillor Despard? Four. Councillor Finger? Four. Councillor Hopkins? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. <coughs> Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungayer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. James Hoy. 
Mayor Kasari. Four. Nine in favor, nine against, and no abstentions. Number seven, Planning and Zoning Commission altered it. The term of the office of Quran Majmudar expires 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2025. Do I have a nomination? Councillor Hopkins. Thank you. I nominate Christian D'Antonio to this alternate vacancy. Uh, second. Second. Uh, Counc Councilman uh, Despard. A any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? Motion to close nominations. Second. Councillor Santalano is second by Councillor Finger. All in favor of closing? Uh, against? Abstentions? Nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Any discussions? Sheila, roll call. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Mancini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Against. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Against. Deputy, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Christian D'Antonio. Mayor Casati. Four. That's seven in favor, two against, against and no abstentions. Okay, number eight, Planning and Zoning Commission. A vacancy exists due to a commissioner no longer having residency. Reappointment or replacement would be in twelve till 12-31-2023. Do I have a nomination? Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor Scala. I'd like to appoint or nominate Karan Majumadar um, for this uh, regular seat. Uh, second. second. Councilor Mangini. Do I have any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close motion. nominations? Councilor Hopkins, second. Councilor Despard. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Discussion. You didn't ask about oh. discussions. He's going to do it right after I was going to do it at, at the end. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All in favor of closing nominations? Uh, against? Abstentions? Okay. Nine in, nine in favor. None against. No abstentions. Uh, any discussions? Yes. Can we read for the record his qualifications? Can that be read into the record? You can, you can read it. wanted to read his qualifications okay that's okay um, Karan says he served as the the PZC commissioner as a commissioner for the past three to four months he's lived in the town since 1975 he has a business in town and he's has served developers through the town permit process and has appeared before planning and zoning Any, anybody have anything to say? Well, Go ahead. I would like to add to Karan's um, incredible resume. He's also been <clears throat> past president of the Rotary. He's done volunteer work that I can't even begin to describe, and he's more than uh, qualified to serve in this capacity. Thank you. Any other discussion? Sheila, roll call. Councilor yes. Despard? Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Mangini. Quran Majmudar. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Against. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Quran Majmudar. Mayor Kasadi. Four. That's eight in favor, eight one, one against, against, and no abstention. Number nine, Planning and Zoning Commission. The term of office of Ken Nelson expires 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2025. Do I have a nomination? Yes, Mr. Despard? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to nominate uh, Louis Fiore. Uh, second. Second. Uh, Councilor Santanella. Are there any other nominations? Councilor I'd like to nominate Omar. Ken Nelson. Uh, do I have a second? I will second. Okay. 
Uh, do I have, is there any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close motion nominations? Motion to close. Councilor Finger. Second. Second. Councilor Mangini. <coughs> All in favor of closing? Against abstentions, nine in favor, zero against, uh, zero abstentions. Uh, any further discussions? Yes. Yes, I'd like to read um, Ken Nelson's experience on the planning and zoning. Uh, he's been great for Enfield. He's done a wonderful job. I would hate to lose him. Um, he's been a town councilor. He was deputy mayor. He was on the high school building committee. He was chairman of the public safety committee. He was chairman of the DPW committee, chairman of planning and zoning. He has 30 years experience with planning and zoning as a contractor and a developer through Connecticut and Massachusetts. He knows the zoning laws and the whole process. He's, he's a perfect candidate for this spot. Uh, he's a great asset to the committee, and I think the town council needs to really think about what's best for Enfield. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councilor Despard? Yeah, I just <clears throat> want to read um, <clears throat> read Lou Fiore's um, qualifications. So he's the former uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, vice chairman, former three-term town councilman, former deputy mayor, current register of voters, former town charter revision member, two-time co-author of town redistrict plan, and uh, former member of cable commission. Okay, any other discussions? Councilor Mangini. Thank you, I'd like to add to uh, Mr. Louis Fiore's qualifications, if you will. Um, Mr. Fiore has been a member of our town since birth. His family has deep roots in Enfield. He does his homework. He does his research. He knows much more about many issues than most of us up here do. And as far as him attaining a seat on planning and zoning, we will all be well served with his background, knowledge, experience, and ability to dissertain and deliver the information necessary and be uh, respectful and courteous to residents. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Councillor Finger. I think Lou Fiore is the most professional person I've ever met in my life. He takes his uh, jobs very responsible. Um, I just think that it's nothing personal against Mr. Nelson for me. I just think that Lou is a better fit and it's about time we move on to getting things done better. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussions? Sheila, roll call, please. Um, are we conducting the vote singly for each candidate, or are, is everyone just going to state the name of who? Okay, great. Yeah, state the um, name, please. Okay. Uh, Councilor Despard. Lou Fiore. Councilor Finger. Lou Fiore. Councilor Hopkins. Louis Fiore. Councilor Mangini. Louis Fiore. Councilor Pisner. Ken Nelson. Councilor Santinella. Louis Fiore. Councilor Ungayer. Ken Nelson. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Louis Fiore. Mayor Crisati. Louis Fiore. Seven votes for uh, Louis Fiore and two votes for Ken Nelson. Number 10, Planning and Zoning Commission, the term of office of Richard Suzik expires 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2025. Do I have a nomination, Councillor Mangini? Yes, I'd like to place the name forward of Mr. Tony DePace. Um, just briefly, Tony has served many, many uh, years um, on the planning and zoning, and Tony has served as well during his uh, tenure there. He is more knowledgeable than most people that I'm familiar with <clears throat> of planning and zoning rules, regulations, and issues. And I believe Tony will uh, serve us well in this capacity. Thank you. Thank you. Second, Second. Co uh, Councillor Despard, any other nominations? Do I have a Councillor Santanella and Second. a second? second. Councillor Finger, all in favor of closing nominations? Against abstentions? Uh, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Uh, any discussions on Tony? Okay, Sheila, roll call. Councilor Despard. Tony DePace. 
Councilor Finger. Anthony DePace. Councilor Hopkins. Anthony DePace. Councilor Mangini. Anthony DePace. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Anthony DePace. Councilor Ungayer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Tony DePace. Mayor Casati. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Number 11, Planning and Zoning Commission, the term of office of John Petronello expires 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2025. Do I have a nomination? Councillor Finger? I'd like to nominate John Petronello, please. Second. Second. Councillor Mangini, are there any other nominations? Okay, do I have a motion to close nominations? Motion to Councilor Mangini, second, Councilor Finger. And all in favor of closing nominations? Opposed, abstentions? Nine in favor, none against, zero abstentions. Any discussions? Sheila, roll call, please. <coughs> Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? John Petronella. Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Mancini. John Petronella. Councilor Pesner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungayer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. John Petronella. Mayor Casati. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Number 12, Tax Increment Financing Advisory Committee. EDC member, the term of office of Richard Stroney expires on 12-31-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be in tw until 12-31-2025. Uh, do I have a nomination? I'd like to nominate Richard Stroney. Councillor Pisner, a second? second. Councillor Finger. Okay, do I have any other nominations? Uh, do I have a motion to close the nominations? Motion to close. Second. Councillor Mangini and second by Councillor Pisner. Uh, all in favor of closing nominations? <coughs> Opposed? Abstentions? Nine, nine in favor? None, uh, none opposed and zero abstentions. Any <laughs> discussions? Roll call, please. Um, Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Richard Stoney. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Mangini. Richard Stroney. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Undyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Richard Stroney. Mayor Casati. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. C, appointments, town manager appointed, council approved, there are none. D, appointments, PNZ commission appointed, council approved, there are none. We move to E, discussion, resolution, the resolution waiving the bid requirements for the purchase of Motorola radios and radio equipment for police vehicles. The resolution. Waiving the bid requirements for purchase of Motorola radios and radio equipment for police vehicles, whereas the Enfield Police Department has a need to order new police radios to install into the new police vehicles, and whereas the Enfield Police Department will need a reliable and professional vendor that is located as close to Enfield as possible, has knowledge of our needs, and is a representative for Motorola and has the ability to complete repairs in a timely manner. And whereas the Enfield Police Department has and used Northeastern Communications for over a decade, and NORCOM is the only vendor with intimate knowledge of our radio system. NORCOM is in Connecticut with the two technicians who live in Enfield with excellent response time for repairs and whereas Motorola was awarded the State of Connecticut contract for such work in the 1990s. For years, we used the same state contract to purchase such radios. It was recently discovered that the contract was not clear in what it covered in the award. NORCOM will honor the same state contract terms that we have previously operated under, and they are the only representative for Motorola in the area. 
Now, therefore, it be resolved that in accordance with Chapter 5, Section 8, Paragraph D of the Enfield Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby determine that it is against the best interests of the town to require competitive bidding for the purchase of Motorola police radios. So moved. Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor <laughs> Sakala, second, uh, Councilor Mangini. Any discussions or questions, Chief? Uh, nothing specific. Motorola is the vendor that we use. Motorola is the vendor that everyone uses to grade a claim. Norcom is their agent. This is the relationship that's been in place for 20 to 30 years. Uh, recently, a question has arisen uh, from the fiscal finance point of view about what exactly is covered in the contract. Out of an abundance of caution, this resolution is before you so that everyone involved in the process has a comfort level. Most importantly, they will continue to honor the rate that we've been paying for all of these years. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, roll call. Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Singer? Four. Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Pisner? Four. Councilor Santinella? Four. Councilor Umpire? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. Oh, four. Mayor Prasadi? Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item, item F will remain uh, on the table, and we will be discussing this uh, in January, our first meeting. Item G, discussion resolution, the resolution authorizing the town of Enfield, acting through its town council, to enter into agreement with Ellen Zapusasu as acting town manager. The resolution authorizing the town of Enfield acting through its town council to enter into agreement with Ellen Zapu Sasu as acting town manager. Resolve that Robert Crisati, the mayor of the town of Enfield, acting on behalf of the Enfield town council, is authorized to enter into and amend contractual instruments in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with Ellen Zapu Sasu as acting town manager pursuant to the Enfield Town Charter, Chapter 4, Section 2, subject to the review and approval of the Enfield Town Attorney. So moved. Councillor Mangini. Second. Councillor Finger. Uh, any discussions or questions? Could you start now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Councillor Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, go ahead. Okay. Defer to Councilor Sakala or Deputy Mayor. Deputy Sakala. Mayor. Oh, um, I will obviously support this. I'm excited, um, but I do want to give a big thank you to Chief um, for stepping in, and we very much appreciate the job, the double duty that you've been doing. I'm honored by the opportunity. Thank you very much, and I too look forward to the next chapter uh, in the town's growth. Thank you, Councilor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to say it was very. Very impressed with Ms. Sapu Sazu uh, in her qualifications, her interview, um, and I'm very, very excited um, to begin to, to utilize her expertise with especially the COVID grant monies as we approach perhaps using some of that on various town projects and infrastructure. I'm very excited for that. I wanted to thank her um, for her professionalism and going forward as well. Councillor Santanella. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also want to thank uh, Chief Fox for uh, his double duty. Um, it is very much appreciated, and um, uh, now I can just bother you on police matters. Um, uh, we had uh, an amazing interview um, with uh, Ellen, and uh, I, I think she impressed all of us. Um, we had another candidate that was impressive as well. Um, and I, I think we had um, the opportunity to um, make a choice. And I think we are making um, an outstanding choice here tonight. Um, the one thing that I, I realized that, you know, the, the, um, the charter uh, requires us to uh, do this for a 90 day term and then revisit this. I just, um, I, I wanna say now that we are entering into what I think is a pretty critical budget phase. And um, I just think that we should, um, as a mindset, uh, really consider this um, for a longer uh, term. Um, I would hate to be in a position in three months to then uh, shift to somebody else. Um, uh, and so I'm hoping that 
um, we, we may be able to orchestrate this so that we can have uh, consistency at least through the time that the, the budget is, uh, is passed. But um, that being said, uh, I am very, very much looking forward to uh, working with Ellen uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Finger. Well, first, I'd like to uh, thank uh, John Wilcox, who got thrown into this right from the very beginning. Um, and I want to thank John. Uh, he's a great person. He's a great finance, uh, finance director. And, Chief, I'm sorry, but I will be supporting Ellen tonight. I know I've always had your back. You're six. So, you know, um, thank you very much for what you've done and what you still continue to do for the town of Infield. You're, you're definitely an uh, outstanding individual. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ungar. I just wanted to thank Chief Fox for stepping up. Um, it continued our confidence in our leadership. So Honored to help. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Well, first, uh, anybody else have anything to say? Oh, okay. You. Councillor Mangiati. Okay. I've already spoken with Ellen, <clears throat> excuse me, directly and congratulated her and welcomed her because I, too, along with what John and everybody else is saying, have been very impressed with her, uh, not only resume, but her uh, interview and with the volumes of uh, background and experience that she brings to the table. I think it's phenomenal. It's definitely going to help Enfield. So welcome. And to our chief um, and to our town attorney as well, because you're always back there holding everybody up. Thank you for your, um, <clears throat> you know, hard work. And um, yeah, for John, John Wilcox for stepping up to the plate. But we, we have a great team here in Enfield, and we um, support each other, and that's what counts. That's what's important. So welcome, and thank you for accepting. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Chief. Thank you for, first of all, coming to Enfield a few years ago. All right? Um, you, you have been nothing but outstanding in, the, in your position. You stepped up, you helped us for the time that, that we needed to, and in our conversation earlier, do you ever say no to somebody that really needs you? And we say, thank you, sir. My pleasure. My, uh, my family will probably not be able to tolerate me by the time I get home. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 sec and second of all, um, I am excited to welcome um, Ellen uh, to be our acting town manager uh, and leading us um, over these next few months and in, into the budget season. Uh, this is, uh, you know, with your credentials, your experience, your enthusiasm, uh, we really look forward to having a great relationship with you uh, where we're going to actually learn from, from you and we're going to learn from each other and doing great things here in Enfield. Um, you know, when, when this process first started, we, we've had some conversations. Now the conversations are real now, and I am really looking forward to it. Uh, you will be adding a lot to this town with your experience. So uh, welcome to Enfield, and um, let's get this roll call <laughs> going here. So. Uh, we can give you a round of applause here. Okay, so Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Without a doubt, four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santinella. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. It's nine in favor, nine against, and no abstentions. Well, since I have a, a revolving uh, traveling mic, uh, would you like to say a few words? Not really. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna, I know it's not really, but, not really. you know? Well, thank you, everyone. I'm really looking forward to the opportunity. There's a lot to be said for um, 
municipal management, especially in times like this. And I think that when I, I look back on some of the decisions that have been made and the policies and the programs that have been put in place, there's a lot to be said for the progress that's happened here. And obviously it's always about going to the next level and working to continually improve that, to have people who live and work here feel good about it, as I said in my interview. And obviously I think so far the team that I've talked to and the people that have reached out to me, it's uh, really going to be exciting. And tomorrow I think there's already some meetings that have been set up. I think Chief Fox is coming in as well as um, the health district and I think finance, which obviously uh, in my estimation are some of the priority issues as we continue to have um, some of the issues around us. So again, I'll be here bright and early tomorrow morning and I look forward to working with all of you. And I think Deb is going to be reaching out to try to schedule some time um, based on your availability and based on your priorities so that I can get a feel for some of the issues that are important to all of you so that we can start putting those in place and have those as building blocks for the budget as well. So thank you. Yes, uh, the one thing I'm looking forward to is history. I'm the first DPW direct uh, individual who works for the town to be able to get on the council since the ordinance been passed. That was history. But also the biggest history is we have an all-female town manager's office. I can't think of any time in the past 35 years we ever had an all-female town manager's office. Never, 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 and I think this is exciting. And being a... Uh, uh, Father of two daughters, a wife, female dog, four granddaughters. I definitely support the female to be in charge. Sorry, guys. Um, God bless. Well, th th thank you, Doug. Greatly appreciate that. I guess that you're not comment. in charge anymore, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I ever was in charge. <laughs> but um, but w welcome, Ellen. Um, thank you. Uh, there's none, nothing under miscellaneous uh, 16 public communications. Is there anyone who would like to address the council? Is there anyone who would like to address the council? Uh, councilor communications? Any final final comments? Councilor Finger? Well, through you to the um, um, uh, intern town manager. The I'm looking at two directions here. Over on Taylor Road, where Nathan Hill School was, we we installed these two solar crosswalk signal uh, stands, it, so the parents could drop off, could walk up with their kids in the parking lot because it was very busy, very uh, very high speed vehicle traffic there. They're sitting there collecting solar dust. Is there a way that we can move those to another school location uh, to find out if that's something that we can do? Uh, but they are just sitting there, just really not being occupied. And, you know, that was something that was very important at the time when we had Nathan Hill as a school. Um, I know a lot of schools have issues with crosswalks, but maybe um, we could figure out maybe a good place for those. So I just wanted to bring that up. I forgot about it earlier. My apologies. All right. Th thank you. Are there any other comments that anybody would like to make? Count uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Um, again, Ellen, welcome. Um, Again, Chief, thank you, and just happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year um, to everybody out there in TV land here and everybody up at this dais, and we will see you next year. Okay, is there anyone else? Well, I have one last thing to state. I would like to wish uh, everyone a happy and healthy holiday season uh, to our, all of our residents out in Enfield. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Please stay safe and well during these difficult times that we are having and experiencing. The uptick of the new variant, I am very concerned about. Please, when, when you're out, wear a mask, wash your hands, stay socially distant. Do the things that, that you have to do. Be responsible. And Happy New Year to everybody. And we will see you. January 3rd at our next meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So, Councillor Mangini and a second by Councillor Ungar. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year. Thank you.